I've got here a sourdough crust mix for a pizza. It's actually quite a well hydrated dough. This is a 75% hydration sourdough mix. I'm going to add some more flour before we make pizza. I want to try and explore what I think is an unexplored avenue of pizza toppings. The idea of pizza toppings you might think has been completely explored and exhausted. I mean, after all, pizza is a big flat piece of bread. People have put just about everything on top of the pizza. And even the crust around the edge, people have explored how to do something with that. So we get stuffed crust pizzas stuffed with cheese or sausages or all sorts of other things. But what if I told you there was another crust, an under crust? The bottom side of a pizza is usually just fairly plain bread crust. So what if we were able to do something with that? And that's what I intend to do today. I'm going to try and make a pizza and underneath it's going to be garlic bread. That's the plan. We may succeed, we may fail. I have no idea if this is going to work, but I've got an idea how to do it. Now, before we go any further, I maybe ought to clarify that the problem I'm trying to solve here is not what you might assume. I'm not trying to fix pizza. I don't actually think pizza needs fixing. What I'm actually trying to solve here is the problem of having a weird idea stuck in your head. And in my experience, the best solution to that problem is give it a try, especially when it's quite a trivial idea. We're going to start by making some garlic butter. So I've just got garlic, salt, butter, and this is garlic chives. Right, so I've got, how many is that? Seven cloves of garlic. They're fairly small ones though. I'm just going to crush them into here. This garlic press is slightly less effective than my regular one. I don't know what's happened to the other one. So a fair old bit of garlic. We'll match that with like a heap teaspoon of coarse salt. And the garlic chives, I'm going to snip in there really nice and small. And then butter. I'm probably going to use about one third of this 250 gram pack. I'm going to cut this into smallish pieces. This butter's been at room temperature for a little while, so... I'm going to cut it up small as well, just to make it easy to blend with the garlic. Obviously this is salted butter as well, so there's a fair bit of salt going in here, but it is going to be distributed across the whole of the bottom crust of the pizza. And then I'm just going to try and combine that together with the back of a fork. Now it would be easier to mix if I melted the butter a bit, but I don't want to do that. We'll see why in a minute. So this is the pan I'm going to eventually cook my pizza in. A little bit crusty, but it doesn't matter. And the idea is that I want little blobs of garlic. It might be easier just to get in there with my fingers, actually, and roll those into balls. Let's see if that works. Okay, I'll just add a few more bits where it looks a bit sparse. If we're going to do it, we might as well do it properly. Okay, I think that'll do. I'm going to put that in a freezer now just to really firm up that butter, because I don't want to squish it when I put the dough on. Toppings on today's pizza is going to be this tomato sauce, which I made last night from just, I had some leftover vine tomatoes, so I stewed them down with onions and basil. I think I put a bit of celery in there as well. And then I've got some pepperoni, green red peppers, green olives, and hot chilies. Anyway, first let's prepare the dough. So this sourdough is just 300 grams of flour, 225 grams of water, a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of my sourdough starter that I made in a previous video. That's been proving overnight and it's now very bubbly, but it's also quite a wet dough because it's a high hydration. That's a 75% hydration. So I'm going to give it some more flour. More flour on top. So it's a bit like a ciabatta dough at the moment but we are going to work a bit more flour into it because I don't want it to be too floppy. Let's get that into some semblance of shape. Just pushing it around to try and make a large-ish rectangle. So the chill has solidified the butter, which is what I wanted. Now, that is also going to set the yeast back a little bit and stop it from proving further, stop it from rising further. But I did need it to do that because I don't want it to just smush out this butter. I want to try and enclose it as much as I can. So I'm just pulling the dough to the edges of the pan like that. I'll pull off a few little bits if there's a need to repair any bits there. 
Okay, that is a bit of a mess. I think that probably would have gone a bit better with a firmer dough, but it's more or less what I envisioned. Bit of a mess, but this is all going to be covered up. The other reason, of course, for using a tray like this is that it's got a raised edge. So rather than cooking this on a flat sheet, there's a lot of butter under there. I want to contain that and I want it to kind of soak into the crust and, and fry the crust as it cooks. So if I did this on a flat sheet, the butter would just run out. Anyway, toppings. So my tomato sauce. That's enough of the tomato sauce, I reckon. It's not obviously going to get smoothed out very much because it's a lumpy, bumpy landscape here. Green and red peppers. I've cut these fairly small, so these will cook as it all bakes. I think these bits of chilli can go scattered from a height to try and get them fairly evenly distributed, but there will be some little surprises there. The rest of those toppings are going to go on top of the cheese. Cheese, I don't have mozzarella, and so I'm just going to use cheddar. Okay. I do also have this vintage red stone, which is like a mature red Leicester cheese as well. So I'm going to put a bit of that on there as well, because why not? Other toppings. It's pretty good. I think maybe just a little bit more. Just to bring that all together. So away we go to the oven. Okay, not certain that's completely done. I'm just gonna probe it in the middle. But it occurs to me what I've actually done here is rather than make a pizza with garlic bread underneath, I've made a pizza that's fried in garlic butter. But let's not say that like it's a bad thing. Well, it's not, the dough is definitely cooked in the middle. I think it's gonna be a little bit soggy, but I think that's kind of unavoidable. I think maybe just another five minutes. I think any more than that, something's going to get burnt. That, at the moment, is buttery napalm, though. So I'm just going to leave that to cool a little bit in the tray. Just, again, run along here, just make sure nothing's stuck. Much easier to do that when it's hot. Going to let that cool. It's obviously going to soak up all of that garlic butter into the crust. But again, let's not say that like it's a bad thing. Sufficient time has now elapsed for this to be still hot, but safe to handle now. Let's see if it'll come out. It's quite sticky underneath by the feel of it, but then I would expect that from garlic bread. It's also quite soft for a pizza crust. So I don't know, we'll see if this experiment is a success or failure. I think that's free from all of the edge now. So let's see comes out in one piece. Quite a lot of garlic still in the pan. Okay, the moment of truth. What is it like underneath? Oh, a little bit doughy, I would say. It is cooked. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Oh wow, that's really good. Really tasty. I'm surprised how well the butter stayed in little pockets. I reckon that could have stood a little bit more heat underneath. Maybe I should fry it on the stove top when I bring it out. But the concept itself seems to have worked. The garlic flavour is, I think it's fair to say, somewhat lost in the mix. But yeah, it kind of almost worked. Nice crispy bits on the edges there. So that's the first attempt at garlic bread under crust pizza. Not a complete success, but definitely not a complete failure either. So I reckon maybe next time, lower hydration dough, maybe thinner crust, maybe fewer toppings. But I think we are onto something interesting here. Let me know in the comments what you think about the idea of putting toppings underneath. So not really toppings, they're underings. Anyway, I hope that experiment was interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.